Just how easy is the easiest difficulty in The Last of Us Part 2? Let's find out. Over the course of trying to beat The Last of Us Part 1 and 2 on the highest difficulty Northwest, and on whole game go. permanent mode, I took breaks to let off steam by playing them through on their lowest difficulty, very light. I've made a separate video on doing that in Part 1, which you should definitely watch. It's off. So here we're going to focus on Part 2. So what affects difficulty in The Last of Us? A number of things. How aggressive the enemies are. Here, they're at the most passive. How passive allies are. On very light, they go all out for you, not just in fighting, but in offering you supplies like health and ammo should you need them. How much damage you can take. As you might guess, it's a lot. How scarce resources are. Again, as you probably expected, not very. And stealth. On very light, enemies take a while to recognize that you're right in front of them. You also, as standard, get lock on aim which makes shooting a doddle. To balance this out a little, I gave myself only one attempt to beat this Let's difficulty go. by turning yeah. on whole game permadeath. For a laugh. One mistake, ask, one moment go. getting whole too cocky because of the difficulty, nice. and it would all be over. So, uh, how did we do? Well, so... Me. What the fuck? Keep your eyes peeled for other infected. I wasn't paying attention, I did not mean to do that. Early on, the supermarket was a doddle with a brick luring all the infected into a Molotov and headshots finishing the stragglers. The first real test of just how easy the difficulty was came from the gondola fight. Normally, my strategy here is to run in circles avoiding the infected, shooting only if necessary to avoid a close call, until it's time to leave. Now, I chose to fight instead, and I was quite comfortable getting headshots from a distance, never once feeling overwhelmed, and being sure every enemy was dead before leaving out. In the courthouse, we discovered that allies being more aggressive still didn't stop Dina being plus-signed, and getting in her own way when I was trying to save her. Watch it. Help me. Good lord. But even then, and even playing recklessly when shooting a clicker whilst the runner was swatting at me, there was no real trouble. The auto aim sometimes ironically stopped me from shooting where I wanted, as a clicker got too close for comfort in the courthouse garage. Still, we came out with plentiful health and supplies. We decided to fight through every area of Capitol Hill instead of sneaking fast to the endpoint as I normally do. And despite the size of the area, every human and infected in each part was dead in 10 minutes. Then we took a jaunt through some trip wires to the TV station and placed a trap mine of our own to reduce the next combat section to a grand total of 10 seconds. Here's my usual tactic. It would have been. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> Penny's still standing? I don't think so. This works on any difficulty, by the way. In the sewers, we let the clickers have some fun then blew them up with explosive arrows. Two rifle headshots per shambler made short work of them, with a modded up axe cutting down any runners who tried to get in the way. Once we got to Hillcrest, there was no agonizing stealth crawl to the red door. Instead, we ran around and killed everyone in a mix of loud and stealth combat mostly sniping from one position, with the only attempt to flank me easily dealt with. Being plentiful with Molotovs, I smoked out the garage infected, before moving on to Hillcrest houses. Generally one of the toughest parts of the game, 
a very light, stealthy murder was a doddle, and even being spotted presented no real problems. It was actually much harder trying to hit enemies with the auto aim whilst dealing with Jesse's erratic driving. I then reminisced about visiting a motel with Joel for the easiest stealth takedowns in the main lobby ever. We killed the bloater pretty quickly, but as it needed to grab me for the scene to end, we toyed with the big burning boy a while before letting that happen. Workbench ambush was another encounter quickly dealt with by trap mines. Then, in the stalker officers, the stalkers finally became the stalked in the most satisfying about face created by the lower difficulty. A close second was being able to annihilate the Seraphites in open combat with very little drama. I normally sneak past the majority of the second Seraphite encounter, but this time I left them all for dead, and on very light the tall boy doesn't have any mates, so that final surprise encounter was a doddle. Gotcha. The hospital, too, was more fun this time to fight through than sneaking as usual, though Nora lost none of her super speed in the chase. Also a fun fight was the flooded supermarket, which again I normally sneak through for the boat. The only obstacle being that the auto-aim sabotages itself with the sometimes ridiculous weapon spray that it's harder to compensate for with the game itself dragging your aim around. As for the arcade bloater... On to Abby's campaign, the first major challenge is the Home Depot, which I swear through far fewer enemies at me as well as them being less aggressive and giving me more time to pop off headshots. They're not clickers. Guess not. Fighting through the rail yard to the fob and defending the gas station was simple enough. Then, on the hunt for Owen, after a very straightforward infected encounter, the two Seraphite encounters in the tilted buildings, which again I normally stealth through, were fun to shoot my way through. I aced the toy bow exercise, but only after turning the lock on aim off. That's one. Yeah, proud of you. Take it off. Oh, hold on. First try. That auto target. How you like me now? Yeah, it's great. Doesn't work I'm with bows. I don't think. Shut up and put me up on the wall. The forest stalker fight was easier in dodging their attacks. But even on very light, stalkers are still a pain in the ass. <laughs> My god. I was getting complacent, I think. The restaurant fight, as always, involved creating a kill corridor for the infected to come to me. But making sure I had enough ammo for the moment was no consideration at all as I was drowning in bullets. And I even felt confident to wander around a bit to take on more enemies than I probably needed to, with Lev having to tell me to leave them and escape. After that, and two more infected filled encounters, I was still flush enough with supplies to waste a pipe bomb on killing a shambler who absolutely could have been left sleeping if I wanted. So we'll do this, because it's fun. <laughs> Returning to the shipping yard, and I breezed through what is usually quite a tough encounter with the Seraphites to rescue Eleven Yara. Then, on the way up to the high shortcut, we killed our way through an infected and Seraphite instead of sneaking past them as I usually do. 
on the way back down, deciding to fight all of the stalkers who appear when I get a gas mask for Lev, quickly revealed itself as a stupid idea. <laughs> God damn. Only the generous health of very light saving me from my own hubris. Killing our way down to the bottom of the building went more smoothly, and we even took the time for an unnecessary but very satisfying blow to take down. <laughs> that big demon oh yeah we did <laughs> we did all of which brings us to the rat king yeah the music is definitely uh... they're gonna kill you come on he's not gonna stop There's the splits. Truth told, the Rat King is never that tough if you're stocked up and can keep your distance. The Super Stalker that splits from him can often be harder. But again, he went down easy. Down we go. On Abbey Day 3, no problems arose from taking on the infected drawn by Tommy, nor in taking on the Seraphites and later the WLF and the two factions fighting each other. Soon enough, we were out of the Seraphite Island and safe. Or so we thought. Absolutely everything I've said about how easy this difficulty is went out the window when we got to the Ellie fight. Stage 1 and 2 were straightforward enough, there being a pretty routine path you can follow with both in order to get your hit in on Ellie. Not quite as simple as Ellie's fight against David in part 1, but still very doable on any difficulty. But then we get to stage 3. She refused to follow when I lured her with sounds, moved erratically and laid trap mines every time I thought I had my moment to follow her. When I was following her, she would turn around before I could close in, and for so long it felt like being too aggressive would get me into a trap, whilst being too cautious would get me boxed in. It felt like it was Ellie rather than me playing on very light, and it was genuinely terrifying. Uh. 
Ah, fuck. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> In the end, I beat her on a pure fluke where she came past me and I'm still not sure how she didn't spot me. After all of that, the Rattlers were no bother. The toughest encounter of the whole game was a doddle, testing neither my health nor my supplies. And soon enough, we were at the end. If somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. So there you have it. How easy is The Last of Us Part 2 on its easiest difficulty? Well, you can beat it without dying as long as you're alright at the game, though stalkers will still be an occasional inconvenience. And Ellie. Ellie is utterly terrifying when you face her as Abby. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. Like the video that just popped up, which YouTube thinks you should watch next. This is a Patreon and member supported channel. So if you want to become a member and unlock custom badges and emojis, early access to my videos and your name in the credits, then click the join button below. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.